This is Patricia Windrow at the Cable Easel, coming to you today with a program devoted to painting and drawing. Today, however, I'm going to draw, and the specifics of the drawing is caricature. I'm sure that everybody is familiar with caricatures, a lot of famous people do it. And I've brought in a guest uh, who is kind enough to give some time from a busy schedule. His name is Steve Levy. He is a legislator from the 8th District. Hi, Steve. Hi, Pat. Nice to see you. I'm nice so glad you were you. able to come. Oh, it's my pleasure. I brought my nose and everything yes. for you. Yes. Well, I'm glad to uh, <laughs> see that he's a man with enough confidence to not worry about being totally demolished by my nasty little piece of charcoal here. No, I'm used to it. <laughs> Especially and in it, politics, I'm used to it. Yeah, well, I'm sure that uh, you, uh, you have to take your lumps. Yeah, but you got to have a tough skin and then just keep rolling with the punches. But Well, you cannot tell me that there's, maybe there's a tough skin, but I see those eyes and they're not tough. Ah. Anyway, you know what caricature is, don't you? Certainly do. Yeah, and you know that, uh, you know that the worse they are, the better they are. <laughs> uh, it's, that's so when it's the other guy being drawn. When it's me, I don't <laughs> when know. When it's you, you want to be far. pretty. Right, right. Well, all right, we'll start. I'm starting with a blank page, which is the way most people who draw start. They start with a blank page. Sometimes I cheat, but t today I haven't cheated. Um, and, uh, you know, drawing, doing caricatures of people means that you have to put more than just the features, more than just exaggerate the features. You have to try to get some, some sort of phase of the personality in there. Did you, are you familiar with like, Xavier Cugat's drawings? No, no uh, all I know about Xavier Cugat is he was married to Charo, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, so and you're also too young. I'm a new generation, that's all I know about you're Xavier Cugat. You're also Cougar, too right? young, which we, we forgive you for being too young because you had nothing to do with yeah, that. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. No. Anyway, um, Cugat was able to get with a very, very few lines the wonderful personality of whomever he was doing. He also was not earning his living as a caricaturist, so he didn't have much to lose. What, mm -hmm. he, had, what, what he had to lose was to goof up with the band. Well, he was, that's why I thought he was a musician. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had a wonderful band, if you like conga and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, I start with the, I'm starting with the general placement on the page which, uh, with the, the proper attitude, should be dead center, which is where politicians love to be, and that's dead center. So, uh, and, and Depends who you're talking about. <laughs> and I'm also trying to uh, capture some of the essential, the essential features of this particular face. And uh, the, so one of the essential features is, no, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> he, he, just, uh, he just tapped his under chin. Of course, he's got an awful long time to go before that begins to worry. Uh, not in this business. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have any gray hairs before this started either. What are the uh, gray? Come oh, on. Yeah, it's kind no. of, I plucked a few out before it came. All right. Out. So um, he, he's conscious of his looks, and he's also conscious of the fact that the, the, the business he has chosen is liable to do a toll on it, but he doesn't really have to worry. An awful long time is going to go by before he really has to worry. But the main part of the identifying features of this fellow is, first of all, the very dark tones, mm -hmm. uh, and also um, heavy brows. And when he's talking about something that I have just noticed, when he talks about something which is interesting to him, one eyebrow goes up. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. The little, the little left, sinister looking. The, yeah. No, 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 the huh? no, quizzical. I think quizzical rather than sinister. Okay. And so the left eyebrow goes up ever so slightly, but in caricature, we have to take advantage of that and exaggerate it. So I have now have one eyebrow on a much different level than the other one, okay. which is going to give you that general, the general feeling of what you do. Then See, I'm we I'm learning have, about myself here. No, don't know. worry. Uh, worry is pointless. No, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> oh, I'm learning. Worrying. Oh, I'm you're learning worrying. about yourself. Ah, I'm not so worrying. I'm liable, liable to learn a great deal mm -hmm. in a matter of 18 minutes, which is, uh, I think, what we have allotted to immortal you forever. Oh. Uh, then the other one is the is the piercing dark eyes, which um, I've been known. I've been told I look like a terrorist on many. Occasions. No, 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 no. I would say that you look like one of my very favorite uh, living creatures, 
and that is, is that a human being or is this a well no I'm not going to compare you to a human being I always <laughs> compare people to uh, to members of the animal world you have the intense look of the eagle oh do I did you know that first of yeah. all your brows your eyelids are, very, are straight across mm -hmm. and there's another fo there's a broadcaster that has the same kind of thing his name is um, he looks just like an eagle and he has wonderful ring hair and he broadcasts out of Washington and his name is it'll come to me he'll come to me it's very similar oh, eye structure on a network or? on a network and he's very famous and he know, never David mind it's, fo isn't, no. it's foolish to try and no. think of something you can't no. think of I've been right. told yes I, I, I wound up looking like Gomez Adams on my... Uh, <laughs> Who is Gomez Adams? You know, no, Gomez Adams, the guy from uh, the Adams Family. The oh, Adams yeah. Family. Oh. Uh, John Astin. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I don't think I look like him that much, but in the caricature that was done for my... I guess it wasn't exactly a caricature. It was um, just a drawing done for my, one of my palm cards when I was running for office. I came out looking close to... Uh, a cross between... John Astin's character, Gomez Adams, and, and Groucho without the glasses. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> I've changed, uh, for anybody who's watching closely at my work here, I have changed my, um, one of my tools, uh, gone from charcoal to magic marker, which is the blackest medium that I can find when I'm doing a drawing to get the black intensity of the eyes and make them really, really dark. So uh, th that's one of the reasons to explain why I use the, uh, the marker. Then you have also something which is um, very characteristic, and that is, uh, sh uh, and they're not from anything else but your characteristic, the dark shadows under the eyes. Got nothing to do with whether you slept well last night or not. Mm -hmm. this, is your, this is a characteristic of your face. Um, with me, it's a characteristic of the years I have lived, but with you, <laughs> with you, it's the face. That's so diplomatic. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's self-deprecating, but with a, a soft side. <laughs> well, Mario Cuomo, I guess you can say. Is Amazing, a wonderful like bags. Mm -hmm. Oh, they caricature they, beautifully. They give him character. Oh, right? they sure do, and they sure, they are, they are the caricaturist's delight. If anything happens to him in the public eye, the caricaturists are going to be very grateful. They were yeah. grateful to Mr. Carter, and uh, what well, they have to, had a field day with uh, Reagan. Yeah. Well, I, I heard that um, President Reagan just went to a uh, convention of cartoon editorialists. Really? I and was, yeah. he was um, lashing back, so to speak, at, at uh, the drawings that they were uh, making of him, depicting him in a certain way. He didn't realize that he had these certain quirks or these certain looks about oh. him. And it was pretty much <laughs> unanimous among all the editorialists well, that course. this is in fact what he looks like. I think they painted him with a, a bit of a bump in his head with well, the way the he parts his hair. Well, the great right. he wears. But he will not concede that that, in fact, is part of his whole look, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty obvious to others. All right. I mean, they've been doing it for an awfully long time now. I mean, the mm -hmm. man's been <laughs> caricatured now for... Eight and whatever, six years? Almost eight. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be eight soon. All right, so um, we have here a ready smile. We have, fortunately, a mustache, which is very helpful to the caricaturist. Uh, can, you, can you name famous people with mustaches? Hmm. Well, of course, my, my look-alike Burt Reynolds. Yes, uh, right? yes, yes. Um, ha -ha. Um, who else? Tom Selleck. Right? Yeah, that's the biggest mustache in town. Right. I mean, no, that that's covers thick. Most, almost that, all his That's face. a thick one. That's a big mustache. Mm-hmm. Let me oh, see. Oh, let's <laughs> see. Let's see. Of course, there's Groucho and Gomez, right? Yeah, there you are. And there's that smile. That's what I was looking for. There we for. go. I was okay. smile. <laughs> um, who else do we have out there with mustaches? There's the Clark Cable skinny mustache. Yes. Right? Notice how I'm, I'm staying pretty much with the. You're staying away from Hitler, I see. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> staying away from Hitler and Charlie Chaplin and <laughs> those little mustaches. Anyway, men have it uh, have the opportunity to to do that. Now, you also have prop, as you know, prominent jawline, which mm. is what makes you the uh, the what's his name look alike. Who did you Who's that? Reynolds. Oh, well, Bert of course. Re <laughs> Bert Reynolds. Burt Reynolds has a pronounced <laughs> jawline, as you do, and... Um, Bel believe me, I was being facetious when I said that. <laughs> you have a, If you weren't as dark as you are, you have a jawline of Robert Redford. He's got, really? he's got a, 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 a pronounced jawline, which is wonderful. Anyway, uh, I'm going to exaggerate those, that jawline to, okay. make it, to make you more, more you. And here is your big, fat smile. 
Let me see. Well proportioned ears, my dear. I find those ears are very you know, acceptable. It, it's funny you say that because this is the only time over the last 10 years, I think, that you'd be able to see my ears. Because uh -huh. I just got a haircut last month and I started reading the paper and before I knew it he had cut around my ear yes. and I hadn't seen my ears for about 10 years. Do you like yourself with your ears? What? Do you that? like your ears? you like yourself? I think they're a little big. No, I think they're a little big. You don't think so? right. Come on. Do I'm a portrait so? painter. I know okay. what I'm talking about. So I used to have the hair come over a little bit. But, no, uh, no, they're ju just right. Okay, We're I'm not self-conscious about my ears anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, end of subject. For now I can keep cutting around my ears. Are you married, man? Nope. Oh. Single, 27, single. Oh, saved her. Married to my work, as they say. Eh? All right. My son's 27. I, or I haven't met the wrong woman, as they say, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, 27 is a wonderful age. Yeah, I bet Everything I have my... Everything is possible at 27. I have my 10-year reunion coming up. That's uh, pretty Don't wild. go. Don't go? <laughs> Take it from experience? Or? I'm looking forward to it. There's some uh, people I hadn't seen in so right. long and thought I'd keep in contact with them, but you just lose touch over the years. All right, now I have. Uh, oh, see, I made an error here. I should give you a thinner neck so I can okay. I can just because I'm working with charcoal. Now I really ought to talk about this technique instead of about you all the time. I'm working with charcoal, which means that uh, it's a volatile uh, medium. You can erase it uh, somewhat as you go along, and it's this the fact that I gave you a larger neck to begin with made you look as though you were a heavier person rather mm -hmm. than a spare build. So here we are. I'm going to get, put some coloring in here. I'll need that. Well, you know, the co you know what the co most important coloring about you is, don't you? I would say, what, the hair and the dark hair? The shadow. Oh, yeah, my Nixon uh, 5 o'clock shadow. The, the, the perpetual 5 o'clock shadow. I have a 5 o'clock shadow uh, five minutes after I shave in the morning. <laughs> yes, I know. Very bad. Do you hate it? Yeah, yeah, oh, I do. Oh, well, don't hate it. It gives you a lot of character. Okay, I'll go along okay. with that. Okay, and we have all this wonderful dark... Uh, dark hair up here, which is well groomed, I must say. Compliments to you my know, mother. You know, um, when uh, I'm going to be um, one of the uh, arrangements here at Viacom is that when I do these caricatures, and I've done Henrietta, and I did um, Pat Vecchio, who is also a really neat character. <laughs> the, uh, the politics out here are really great fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, the people are really nice. Uh, I give these caricatures uh, to. Uh, to Viacom and they dispose of them as they as they choose. Now I don't know whether they're going to cho choose to uh, give where they're going to choose to give this. Well, I'll cover a crack in the wall somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, if you want it, you might talk up for it. They may they may just uh, they may just. I'll have to it. look at it first, then I'll okay. let you know if I want. All right, you want to look at it oh, first? Oh, it's done already. Well, not yeah. done already. It's sort of done, <sighs> but it's got the general lesson. Are you ready? Uh oh, don't do Okay, here we go. Ta da! Yes, that's. <laughs> Pretty close. Wait a minute, your smile is much more prom you, you just smiled and I saw something which I didn't see before. The smile goes way up into a really neat corner here. That's better. Here we are. There we are. I, I, I imagine it's always best for someone else to judge whether or not yes. it looks like you because I guess no one, you exaggerate certain things about well, yourself and you, you, don't you always see think yourself, you look, yeah. and it's sort of like talking into a a uh, tape recorder, you deny that it's your voice. Yeah, do you? you know? uh, yeah, I mean, and people are shocked when they hear what they sound exactly. like. Exactly. But that, okay. looks, that looks very good. All right, we've got that, and then I'm getting a little bit more as we go along. Okay. However, good heavy brows. Here we mm -hmm. are. Uh, this was painless, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to give you a tone of, uh, of uh, a healthy tone. And I'm doing this I with pastels. Okay. I've got a one white one and one red one. And this is for an instructional thing as well as, as being entertaining and, and getting to meet you through this medium, but also to tell them how I do this kind of thing. So I've worked with charcoal. Uh, the eyes have been done in magic marker because of the blackness. And I'm using pastels for the uh, tone on the skin, which should be reduced way down in a drawing like this. You should not concentrate on, on tremendous, uh, this is not portraiture, this is caricature. So we don't do it complete, but we give the essentials. The essentials are that you're a y nice young 27 year old man who is healthy and therefore he's got to have pink cheeks. Oh, right? I'll go along with that. All right, right. I'll go along with that. And then because you have 
in identifying Mark, and that's your, which you just took called your five, your perpetual five o'clock right. shadow. I'm going to put that in as well. I thought you were talking about my little beauty mark here, if that's what you want to call it. Oh, let me put mold. that in. I just happen to oh, have I shouldn't have mentioned anything. I'm not oh, it's a beauty mark. It. Oh, okay. Well, what's the matter with a beauty mark? Some people put those on whether they're there or not. You're right. And uh, just only the very slightest indication. We're not going to make you look like a bum under the tr on the track. <laughs> We're going to just give you your little five o'clock shadow here and hope that that, and then, oh, there's some nice color in the mouth. And uh, so you're a local fella, right? Local fella, yep. I live in Holbrook and I Where represent a small district. I was born in Glendale, Queens, believe it or okay, not. Well, and sorry. was raised there for my first 10 years, then moved out here in 19... Um, 69 and been living in Holbrook ever since. It's a charming spot. It is. Yes. Really is. It, it, as a matter of fact, over the last uh, 10 years, it's been one of the fastest growing sections of Suffolk County. We have a few more minutes. Tell me about what uh, people ought to know specifically about Holbrook. Holbrook is pretty much a residential community. It's yeah. starting to uh, obtain an identity of its own. When, when you're a new community, it takes time to build yourself a, a business district and, they, and they obtain that kind of identity. But now we have a park coming to the What's area. It which It's going to be the Holbrook Country Club, as okay. a matter of fact. Which yeah. people, public? Um, uh, yes, it's going to be open to the public, and we're very proud of that. And we have a business district that is um, being initiated. And we have our very own Main Street now, so we're, we're starting to boom in Holbrook, and uh, we're quite proud of that. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, but let's not make it so that Holbrook becomes a tourist attraction. Then oh, I don't think we have to worry that. about that. I, I don't think we're going to go that far. All right, we have here, I'm going to sign this with my, with my signature, and I'm going to put it right here. And... Um, there you have it. Now, what do you think of yourself with rosy cheeks and a five o'clock shadow? Oh, there I am. <laughs> now, that's more the, me, the real me. That's great. I Good. That's fantastic. Well, I'm glad. Okay. Uh, you have some lovely laugh lines that to see, you, see to, to knock things out in a matter of short space of time is sometimes uh, not a good idea, but the lovely laugh lines have to come in here because okay. you obviously are a very happy fellow. Happy in your work? Yeah, I do love it. I have to say that. And have you any idea what your prognosis of the rest of your life is going to be? Oh, I'm taking it one day at a time. I like <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> Very wise indeed. Yeah. Well, give me one final word before we have to bid you goodbye. Our program, uh, I mean, this part of, the, of, of, of caricaturing you is almost over. Oh. So Holbrook is a lovely place, a lovely residential community that's coming into its own, and you're the guy that represents yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm very proud of that, and I also represent the hamlets of Bayport and Sable, Bohemia, Ronkonkoma, a bit of Hop Hog as well. Good. And I'm quite pleased with that. And uh, if I can do it for the rest of my life, I'll do it. I'm sure that nothing is going to stop you. Thank oh, well, you thank so you much very for much, coming, Pat. Steve. Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm quite proud of that. And I'd love to place it in my office if possible. So, thank Just you. open your mouth. Okay, we'll do. Thanks. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. We'll be right back. back again. Steve Levy was our guest a moment ago. He's gone and now I'm going to continue with a uh, famous personality. 
I think it's always rather fun to do it first and then identify them later. Sometimes it's not necessary. With any luck, it isn't necessary. So let me go with this. I'm working from some reference material because um, I don't have the subject at hand. So uh, beginning exactly uh, the same way as I did with the, uh, with the portrait that I did from life, I mean the caricature that I did from life, I'm doing it from uh, reference material. And starting with, well, I, this time I'm going to be starting with the, the general shape and size of the head. Um, in, uh, as, uh, as mentioned before, caricature, the, es the, the essence of caricature is the size uh, and also the exaggeration of the size of things. So when you, when you begin you must, uh, and if you're working from life, you're lucky enough to work from life, make sure that you observe clearly what the main ingredients are and then exaggerate them uh, sometimes more than double uh, even triple you can become almost to free with the amount of um, exaggeration that you do so uh, using the uh, using a photograph of this personality I'm, I'm working um, with the uh, with uh, t taking a perfectly normal photograph and then exaggerating the, si the size of the features uh, this particular, uh, I'm working in magic marker so that I, um, so that you can see that um, materials uh, are ordinary materials. There isn't anything extraordinary about the materials that I use. Everybody is a, can buy these. This is called a sharpie. It's a magic. It's a so sort of called a laundry marker, and it's very good and very black. And it also allows one to do something else, which is to watercolor or pastel over it without smearing anything. Charcoal tends to smear rather badly. And so um, I, f I think that the, um, the use of the marker is uh, many times uh, uh, very helpful, especially if you want to apply color. So I'm working here with the eyes. The characteristic of these eyes is that they are huge and they are also set in, um, well, in, I, I, I call this in a worried look. There is almost a perpetual worried look about these eyes. Um, they're very famous eyes, as a matter of fact, and um, uh, the, uh, the rest of the face, sometimes there have been tests about who this person is just by using the eyes. The intense dark shadows, such as uh, Steve Levy had, which is part of his characteristic, certain, as I said, not his age, uh, is the same thing here. Um, and uh, that, that can be, of course, exaggerated. Uh, as uh, all other features can be. I'm going to set the ear in here and there's always a great deal of hair in this character so the, um, the ear is many times covered over. Then with, uh, with the uh, information at hand I'm, I'm using the size of the mouth as a guidepost but also uh, increasing its size even more than I'm increasing the size of the eyes. The, um, uh, there, are, there are faces which sometimes are easier to caricature than others because the exaggeration of the features, you know, large eyes, large mouth, lots of hair, prominent nose, those are all very caricaturable. But they're also a little, they're also a little perplexing because which one do you pick on to be the most, uh, the most um, indicative of the person? Uh, I've picked on, apparently I've picked on both of them, both the, uh, the eyes and the mouth. And here I'm going to uh, fill in, I'm using charcoal this time because I'm not going to be getting anywhere near the hair with pastel. So I'm going to uh, begin to try to make this more recognizable, introducing the hue. I'm, I'm using the pastel sideways, as you can see. It becomes, um, it becomes a, 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 um, a device which means you can cover a great deal of, ter of, of, of space in a short period of time by using the charcoal sideways. Well, of course, this, this fellow has such an extraordinary bunch of hair that um, you, have to, you, can, you can sort of cover the page with it. And charcoal wears out in a great hurry, which means I have to get another piece uh, in order to continue, and here's my little box of charcoal. Um, so uh, the um, information that I'm trying to uh, put forth here is that the um, the use of television is also a very uh, useful 
when you're working, when you're trying to work from live human beings and you don't have them there posing for you, um, the television affords a great deal of opportunity to use uh, um, the human face to, to, uh, for, for not only for practice, but for a great deal of um, uh, very informative drawing. Now, the other, the other characteristic of this particular person, or I believe, uh, no, they're not blue. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've lost my mind. They are very brown and very deep, dark, uh, deep, dark eyes with these prominent shadows underneath. And then, of course, uh, the uh, heaviness of the lid can be exaggerated by giving the lid a highlight, such as I'm doing here. It's um, it's it's like shadowing a bowl. If you make the if you make one side dark and the other side also dark, you'll get a shine in the middle. It's a little uh, it's a little device which is uh, which is useful to know, and it comes from observation and a certain amount of training and the uh, information that comes from classical drawing. Namely, when the teacher sets up the still life with the bowl and the light set up on one side, it isn't just because that's uh, the setup, it's also to teach a lesson on the sh sh shading of things. So here is the, uh, the shading of the, of the eye ball and also the eye lid is important in this particular drawing. Then, if you're uh, interested in giving the nose a small shape, you can do it just with a finger that's got a little bit of pastel on it. You don't cover the entire face. And then, of course, the, the, um, the uh, mouth can be, the top lip are always in, in shadow, sh more in shadow because they go in. And as you see, I'm using my finger to, to blend. And uh, once again, the use of putting highlights. Now you can put two highlights here because the lips are so full, there seems to be two bulging areas of the mouth. And when you, when you blend that in, you can see very clearly that those highlights are what make that lower lip stick out. If I were to darken the top, uh, the top lip, you would see that it would have much more three-dimensional form to it. Such as, I've done, such as I did on the eyelids, the uh, use of shading in caricatures is, is as important as it is in, in portraiture. The only difference is that uh, it's exaggerated. So we have here, I believe this man is known as Sly, Sly Stallone, and he, uh, let, me, let, me, let me be even more cruel and give him a real blue five o'clock shadow, because many times he is remembered for those particular characteristics. I, uh, I hope that the, uh, this little session of working, first of all, from life with Steve Levy, and then secondly, working from a reference material, as I have done here with Stallone, has been helpful. I think that uh, all of the uh, information that I've given you could be used. Work from television if you want to do portraits of people, because not everybody is willing to sit and pose for a long time. Uh, in any case, work from life as often as possible. This is Patricia Windrow at the Cable Easel, thanking you for watching and hoping that you've gotten something out of this session. Bye-bye. <laughs>